Over the past two years, we've seen budget mountain bikes at Walmart really evolve. But Huffy, one of the staples of budget cycling, they haven't really had a bike of the caliber that we've been seeing the past couple of years until now. This is the new Huffy Dakari, a total looker and feature packed. $598 at the time of purchase. I'll put a link down in the description. Let's see how it's equipped component by component, starting like I like to up top at the bars, alloy bars, lightweight, 31.8 millimeter mountain bike diameter, a graphic that I think is supposed to be a sideways H. It does match the other graphics in color and it's a sticker. You can peel it off if you don't like it. Handlebar width, 720 millimeters. Capping the bars, rubber slip on accordion style grips, basic but soft and grippy. Controls, there's nothing on the left, and since this is a one by, there's only one thing on the right, the shifter. It's a nine speed with a shift indicator window. And we've been seeing all sorts of off brands when it comes to shifters, but for the Dakari, they stuck with the classic, a Shimano Altus. Many though aren't gonna pay attention to that because their eyes are gonna go to one of the Dakari's big ticket items, the hydraulic brakes. Unbranded, but a very familiar design. And Kev Central viewers, they want hydraulic disc brakes on mountain bikes. Huffy clearly listened. Stem, it's alloy and a little longer than I expected, but not crazy long, and there's a reason for this. More on that in a moment. Below the stem, a bigger talking point, the head tube with a visible taper. Another big deal to Kev Central viewers, and more on this in a moment, let me just say, if you don't know what a tapered head tube is, they are wider at the bottom than at the top, and usually that's to accommodate a tapered fork. The Dakari's head tube angle 68 degrees. The Dakari's fork, it's not tapered, but it's still from the Kev Central Basic Trail Capable list. An SR Sun Tour suspension fork with dual preload adjusters, 100 millimeters of travel, 30 millimeter stanchions, hence the name, XCT30. No bolt-on wheels here, also no through axle. This is a standard quick release, it's on this side, for ease of filming. The important thing is the wheels that this quick release is holding in place, they're 27.5, making the Dakari a bit unique in the modern budget mountain bike circle. These wheels are made up of black spokes, double wall alloy rims with the Kari branding, and they're wrapped in 27.5 by 2.30 eh, knobbies, but not really aggressive knobbies. We've been seeing a lot like this recently, but still it's 27.5 inch wheels, so I'm always happy to see that. Drivetrain, which kicks off with plastic, who cares because we always swap these out anyway pedals. The crank set is a pro wheel crank set with long crank arms, 175 millimeters long. This is a one by, so there's only one chain ring and it's a single narrow wide chain ring, a 30 tooth. On the bars, we saw a Shimano Altus shifter. The rear derailleur, that's a matching Shimano Altus product. It has no clutch. We've been seeing budget clutches with iffy reliability of late and some other brands. Shimano Altus, it's a safe choice. The best part of the drivetrain though, that's going to be the cassette. No free will, this is a cassette. Note the lock ring. The brand is L2 or LT Wu, however you want to say it. The range, 11 tooth to 36 tooth, which is a good compromise. Decent top speed and fairly easy uphill pedaling. I usually tilt my builds towards easy pedaling, but Huffy clearly trying to strike a balance. Visible shortcuts to meet a price point, there are a couple. I would say the grips and this seat post clamp, because I don't think I've seen a non-carbon fiber mountain bike without a quick release clamp in, well, a long time. The seat post itself, 27.2 millimeter diameter, 330 millimeters long. It has a decent and easily adjustable saddle mount. The saddle itself, it's black vinyl. I mean, it looks harder than it actually is. It's not gonna win any awards or win anyone over, but it's also not gonna run anyone off. Where I want you to focus is how high this can sit up because this relates directly to fitment and the frame, the 6061 aluminum frame, which video does not do justice to. With its wineish red paint, it's nicely welded, it has modern lines and fancy tapers. And as far as future flexibility, the tire to frame gap, there's extra room. The question I think most viewers are gonna have is what size is this frame? Well, it's small. It's 15 and a quarter inches, which is normally too small for my 510 body. But don't drop out just yet if you don't like small frames. Let's see what happens because there's a lot to like here and Huffy has put some thought into this and that's gonna come full circle in a few minutes. There is good build quality and they didn't cheap out on some components. Sometimes you see big box bike brands cheap out on, 
like there is a cartridge bottom bracket, a KMC chain, we've already covered the Altus, and we know this has hydraulic brakes, but you didn't know it has 160 millimeter rotors, and that's front and rear, and sometimes rotors on big box bikes, even the more expensive big box bikes, tend to be a little thin and easy to warp. These are nice and thick, good solid rotors. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I've already shown that the front wheel is quick release. The rear is as well. Bottom to top, top to bottom Dakari specs, they're acceptable. The question is, with a 15 inch frame, 15 and a quarter inch, can I ride this thing? Before I get going on the trail, I want to mention when I pay more for a bike, I expect it to be better tuned out of the box. How was the Dakari shifting? I had to make a single micro adjustment of the shifter's barrel adjuster. From there, it dialed right in. It was easy to shift through all gears, low to high, high to low. Braking worked out of the box, no need to bed in, though I did need to adjust the throw on the right lever, but remember that red knob? A slight twist of that, and the brake levers engaged equally. That quick, and the bike's ready for the trail, and I'm gonna start out slow, and that's for a couple of reasons. Number one is I intended to show off the new trails, except they're now covered in leaves, but also this is the climb up. I want to test out that easy gear and the shifting to get to it because people often get bikes out on the street and they shift through and say it works fine, then get on the trail and find out under some stress, it's not so fine. I'm also interested in the clearance on those 175 millimeter crank arms because I'm unsure how low that's going to get and it didn't take long over the first route or two where it was easy to lightly graze what I know I should be able to pedal right over. And that's a double concern when all those roots are covered with leaves. Test strokes in, let's get this Dakari up to speed in high gear where it's zippy. Now it's probably not gonna win any races, but there is a good balance between the low and high gears. And definitely more than enough to get new riders into white knuckle mode, especially with these tires, because well, they're not super grippy. Someone commented to me that these tires looked more like gravel bike tires. Well, they're more aggressive than that, but not by much. If I had to sum the tires up for a new rider, I would say they were built more for straight line speed than they are actual trail grippiness. And that's something to remember, especially on the twisties. Tires aside, this is a decent handling bike, which is surprising to me because of the 15 inch frame, which oddly enough, I fit well on. A part of that could be the 27.5 tires. If you watch this channel, you'll know that's my preferred wheel size. Along with being nimble, it's also light by budget big box standards, 31.8 pounds. Some bikes feel heavier than they are, some feel lighter. This on the lighter side. But what's so puzzling to me is the fitment, because a 15 inch frame, I should be ultra cramped and I'm not. Now it's close, I'm right on the edge, but I would say this bike fits riders from 5'10 down to maybe 5'4. Maybe lower, I don't know how small, small frames go. Important details, because had I have seen this listed and they put a 15.125 inch frame, I wouldn't have purchased the bike, thinking I would never fit on it. But it fits, it's nimble, and it works on the trail out of the box. Now, I did have one failure, the only failure, on my first ride. A single chain drop, and this kind of happened out of nowhere. You saw what I just rode over. That's nothing I would think would cause a chain drop, but it happened. Now, it only happened that one time, and I started thinking back. You know, every time that I've had a bike with an Altus, I think I've had chain drops on this trail. The last one, I believe, was the GT Aggressor Pro. Comment below if you know if the Altus was what was equipped on that bike, but I remember it had chain drops here. So I need to note that, and while I'm here, those long crank arms, you see what I mean? That's pretty close to the ground. My initial thoughts would be that this bike would be better served with 170 millimeter crank arms, but we're about to talk more about why I think it's equipped with 175. Working my way back to the trailhead first ride performance comfortable. And the suspension with the SR Suntour, someone will inevitably comment that they're horrible. No, they're not horrible. They're the basic bare minimum for riding on a green trail. And that's what these entry-level bikes are good for. As far as the Altus goes, remember some entry-level local bike shop bikes that cost more than this one, they come with a tourney which is below the Altus. And I did have the one chain drop on the trail, but in my bounce test, didn't have an issue. To get it to drop in my bounce test, I had to literally slam the back end to the ground. And that's literally trying to get it to chain drop so I could film it in slow motion, like you're seeing here. Better than budget alternatives? I don't know, I would take an Advent before I would take an Altus, but I'll take an Altus before some of the other options. Overall, I think Huffy did a good job with their component selection for what is their first modern era Walmart mountain bike. 
It has all the traits many viewers look for, and it checks a lot of the boxes on my mental Kev Central What a Bike Needs to Be a Good Entry Level Budget Mountain Bike List. The high points, as I see them, obviously the drivetrain with a cassette, the wide handlebars, also part of the drivetrain, but the Alta shifter. And what you don't know is before I rode this, I was on a bike with a budget shifter. Going from that to this, a major difference. And having a shift indicator window, that's helpful to new riders. And of course, the hydraulic brakes. They're generic, but generic knockoffs of a really good design. And if you haven't ridden hydraulic brakes before on a mountain bike, just trust me on this. If you have the extra money to get a bike with hydraulic brakes, it's worth it. As far as the Sun Tour goes, I said this was 100 millimeters of travel. I actually measured 90 millimeters of grease mark, so that's how I get to the 100. Why they went with dual preload adjusters instead of a preload and a manual lockout is kind of a trivial difference, but it's worth note. The important thing to me is that this Sun Tour fork wraps around a 27.5 inch wheel, and I think that's where the Dakari is going to find its riders. Its components set with 27.5 inch wheels, there is a subset of us that look for bikes just like this. There are some other major points of mention though. Mostly positive, some near genius, and a couple of nitpicks. I'm going to start with the genius. A 15 and a quarter inch frame, how can I possibly fit on this being 5'10"? Well, that's due to crafty engineering and a component selection that work hand in hand. Example, this seat post extends up higher than usual on a 15 inch frame mountain bike, and that puts me up higher. But good geometry means that I'm not up too high. And I'm not leaning too far back or too far forward with some crafty head tube angle geometry and a stem that's almost 70 millimeters. Well, what about leg extension? Well, that's where those 175 millimeter crank arms come in. With all this together, I have enough room for proper leg extension, and if you're a shorter rider, just slam down the seat. I just bragged about the crank arms, but that's also a good segue to nitpicks of mention because those long crank arms also equal iffy clearance. Ironically, this is more testing to entry-level riders that this bike is targeted for. Internal cable routing, good. The lack of dropper port provisions, not so good. I'm sure market analytics showed that there were so few riders that would take advantage of that. But there are other bikes at this price or below this price. So at 598, I really do expect it at this point. Plus, look at this. On the bottom of the bottom bracket, there's a cable guide. And look at that one port. That's for a dropper cable, but nothing on the frame. And I'm impressed that there are only a couple of obvious cheap outs, but the one, that seat post clamp. I mean, how much could it have cost for a quick release seat post clamp, like an extra nickel? And the tire tread, I get that most big box mountain bikes get ridden on the street. But when you get up to prices like this, edging up to $600, some of these, they're going to see use on the trail. Now let's talk about this head tube and the taper, because it's all about the taper these days, and this is externally tapered. I measured this, and it's 51 millimeters at the top and 57 millimeters at the bottom. By comparison, all of my other tapered head tube bikes are around 60 millimeters at the bottom. And most tapered head tubes use a lower headset cuff that's either 55 or 56 millimeters. So you can see, 57 millimeters doesn't leave a lot of wall thickness. So I've decided to do a dedicated video where I make unofficial geometry specs. I'll measure everything on this bike and I'm going to take it apart. We're going to look at that lower headset cup and see if or what could work in there to accept a tapered fork or if it can't. Because whether it can or can't, that's a big deal, especially considering the price of the bike. So look for that video in the coming days. And also, I made a YouTube short and I asked you to put in questions that I would put in this video, but I don't want this video to be 45 minutes long. So I'll put those in the geometry and specs video. And that's my experience thus far. There's lots of good here, some amazing work with geometry, a couple of shortcuts, and that one big question. I've also started wondering with all the disruptions if this was supposed to dominate 2021, but with everything that's went on, it just now hit the market. Either way, this is the best Huffy mountain bike that we've seen at Walmart. And I'm nostalgic for the Huffy brand, so I'm happy to see it. I'll put a link down in the description to the Dakari on the Walmart website. If you want to look at it, or if you want to buy it, there's the link. Remember, using Kev's Central links helps this channel. It doesn't matter what you buy on Walmart, using Kev's Central links helps support the channel without costing you anything extra. And there you go, the Huffy Dakari, the best Huffy Walmart mountain bike we've seen yet. Not only that, this is the best I've ever been able to fit on a 15-inch frame mountain bike. And it's good strategic marketing by Huffy, a sub-$600 bike 
with 27.5 inch wheels and these components, they found a void. There it is, a first look at the Huffy Dakari. Now I wanna know what you think. I know based on that YouTube short, a lot of you have opinions about this bike, comments and questions. Now that you've seen it, let's hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.